Hi everybody, this video will be part of a series on gram-negative bacteria, and specifically this one will be about gram-negative rods. Now, uh, in the series we're going to make on gram-negative rods, we're going to break it up into two categories, lactose fermenters and non-lactose fermenters. So the lactose fermenters can sometimes be abbreviated as LAC+. Uh, you may see it in your study materials and on the test, and the gram-negative rods that don't ferment lactose are categorized lac negative. Okay, first, just a distinction between gram negative rods and gram negative coxoid rods. This lecture is going to be about gram negative rods, not gram negative coxoid rods. So in gram negative bacteria, there's a few different shapes of gram negative bacteria. There's the coxoid rods, there's the rods, and the cocci. And so the coxoid rods, just to quickly mention, include this group here which we won't be talking about in this lecture, but I will have a lecture coming up later on that focuses on the coxoid rods. This is a big chart that kind of organizes the gram-negative rods. And so at the beginning of the lecture, I mentioned that there are uh, lactose fermenters. And so that's this category here. And then there are the non-lactose fermenters. And this video is gonna be all about the lactose fermenters. And so I don't want you to get too overwhelmed by this, but if you wanna pause the video here, you can kind of uh, read over this and it's a good overview of everything. One thing I do want to point out is that lactose fermenters turn pink on McConkie's agar. So this is something that occasionally will come up on the exams and you definitely want to know that. There's two types of lactose fermenters. There's the bacteria that ferment lactose fast and the bacteria that ferment lactose uh, slow. So we're going to focus on first of all the fast fermenters, okay, Klebsiella. E. coli and enterobacter. And of these bacteria, the ones that are tested on most frequently are Klebsiella and E. coli. And for that reason, I'm not really going to talk too much about enterobacter, or citrobacter, or serratia. I'll mention them briefly, but if you want to study those a little more in depth, you can do that. But uh, the majority of the questions will come from Klebsiella and E. coli. Klebsiella is gram negative, it's a fast fermenter, and it's lac plus. Okay, the number one thing that you usually see come up about Klebsiella is that it causes nosocomial uh, urinary tract infections. So that means that they're hospital acquired UTIs. And UTIs can be a little bit of a tricky question here because if I go back to the previous slide, you'll notice that on Klebsiella I put nosocomial UTIs and then E. coli I put UTIs here. You have to really pay attention to what the question is asking here, and we'll cover that in some other slides. Okay, and so the number one thing is nosocomial UTIs. The second thing is pneumonia uh, and bronchopneumonia. So there's another type of Klebsiella. It's called Klebsiella pneumoniae, and it causes pneumonia and bronchopneumonia. Frequently see that in patients that are diabetic or alcoholics and it's a lactose fermenting enteric bacteria. So I again included lactose fermenting just because you don't wanna get so hung up on one way to define this bacteria because on the board exam, they like to use all the different ways to define a bacteria. So you have to kind of open your, open your mind to different ways to s say the same thing. Okay, so the Klebsiella is also known for having a capsule and one way that you can discover if you've got Klebsiella bacteria is with the quelling reaction. And so when you perform the quelling reaction, the bacteria will swell. And that's because of the capsule. And it's actually the capsule uh, that swells. So antigens are targeting uh, the, the capsule and the capsule will swell. And so I remember that by thinking swelling. So quelling, swelling and it grows pink on McConkie's agar. And so we're gonna use um, a little bit of a memory aid here to remember which bacteria are growing pink on McConkie's agar because uh, like if I go back to this one, all of these bacteria grow pink on McConkie's agar. Again, but the most common ones that we're gonna focus on are Klebsiella and E. coli, but you should kinda know that the rest of these turn pink on McConkie's agar. Okay, so moving on to McConkie's agar, so this is used to distinguish gram-negative lactose fermenters from gram-negative non-lactose fermenters. So does it grow pink on McConkie's agar? If yes, 
then it's a gram-negative lactose fermenter. If 